Today's episode of Build the Roster is brought to you by NordVPN. You know, Dr. Light, I'm pretty sure Wiley wouldn't be able to keep stealing your robots over and over if you would just install them with NordVPN. Folks, it's a scary world out there. Hackers spying on what you're doing, stealing your information. I'm pretty sure Capcom themselves know a thing or two about that. That's why you need to get yourself a VPN. And NordVPN isn't just one of the top-rated VPNs out there. It's the one that I use. I'm not just saying that because they're sponsoring today's video. No, this is real. A few months back, I had a bit of a security issue. If you follow me on Twitter, you know all about that. And I realized I need a VPN, so everywhere I looked, everyone said NordVPN is the best. So you better believe I was happy when they reached out to me because this is a product I haven't just been using, but I've been very satisfied with and will gladly promote. With just a single click of a button, NordVPN can hide your location, making it so that nosy neighbors can't find out what you're up to, and it's been ranked as having the fastest and smoothest connection of any VPN, and it uses military-grade encryption to protect your data and keep you safe from hackers. Heck, it can probably even keep you safe from the Sigma virus, and that thing is everywhere. Not to mention, you can change your IP address, which will allow you to watch shows and movies on streaming services that are blocked in your country, and let's just say that's helped me out a few times when I needed footage for these videos. And now I'm here to help you out because I'm going to give you a crazy huge discount today. Go to nordvpn.com slash Thorgy and use the code word Thorgy at checkout to get a two-year plan with this exclusive deal, plus four bonus months free. It's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. That is huge. So make your web surfing a safer experience today and sign up for NordVPN. Thank you very much to them for sponsoring today's video, and enjoy the rest of the episode. As we said in the last episode of Build a Roster, 2022 is an insane year when it comes to 35th anniversaries. So many beloved video games got their start in 1987. Street Fighter, Metal Gear, Final Fantasy, the list goes on and on. But one of the most iconic characters celebrating this anniversary is Mega Man. Yes, the Blue Bomber got his start 35 years ago, and since then he's gone to become one of the biggest names in video games. He's received sequel after sequel and launched a whole multiverse full of spin-offs, each of which have built up their own fan bases. He's conquered the world of platformers, thrived in the tactical RPG scene. He did okay in the third-person shooter realm. There was a soccer game. Remember that one? It was okay. And then there was that racing game that never came to America. Okay, Mega Man has had a lot of genres under his belt. That's the point I'm getting at here. But there is one that he has yet to really dive into. Fighting games. Oh, don't get me wrong. He's been in a lot of fighting games, but he's never had his own Mega Man-centric fighter. At least, not yet he hasn't. So we're going to fix that today as we build the roster for Mega Man Fighters. Welcome to Build the Roster, the show where we take a hypothetical fighting game and build our dream roster around it. And as I said, this year is Mega Man's 35th anniversary, and that deserves to be celebrated. He's a legend in the industry. There was a time when he stood side by side with Mario and Sonic, and he's continued to build audiences across generations. Who doesn't love Mega Man? Oh, right, them. Yeah, it looks like not everyone has been that excited to celebrate Mega Man's anniversary. Namely, the guys who own Mega Man. In fact, Mega Man has been a very odd sore spot for Capcom ever since Keiji Inafune left the company. Mega Man 10 came out in 2010, sold relatively well, and then Capcom suddenly decided to cancel four different Mega Man projects all at the exact same time and left him to rot in their vault for the next eight years until Keiji Inafune suddenly re-emerged and made bank on Kickstarter with his project I Can't Believe It's Not Mega Man, which inspired Capcom to release another actual Mega Man game, probably out of spite. And so we got Mega Man 11, a great return to the franchise that was applauded by fans and critics alike. So, of course, Capcom shoved Mega Man back into their vault right after that. Dang, I guess that game must not have sold very well. I guess after all this time and all these requests, people didn't actually show up for the new Mega Man game. I'm just kidding, it was the second highest selling Mega Man game of all time, and I don't mean classic Mega Man, I mean all Mega Man. 
Yeah, Mega Man 11 sold so well that Capcom themselves said they were shocked by it and that because of that, they were going to try and bring back some more old dormant franchises. Cut to four years later, and there is currently no plans for a new Mega Man game, and in those four years, the only old Capcom franchise they've tried to resurrect was the only one that nobody was asking for. Wow, great, a brand new Ghost and Goblins. That's so much better than any of these. Thanks, Capcom. Way to have your finger on the pulse of your audience. Okay, okay, okay. In all fairness, Capcom has done something for the 35th anniversary. They have announced that they are finally releasing a Mega Man Battle Network collection, which fans have been asking for forever. So that's great. But as far as a new game goes, well, I hope you like that gotcha game because that's as close as we're going to get. I know there are rumors going around that a Mega Man X9 is on the way, but those rumors have been going around for half a decade. It's time to finally face the facts that no matter how much fans are asking for it or how well it sells, Capcom isn't interested in making a new Mega Man game. I'm saying all this so that way I'll look like an idiot when Capcom announces a new game in a month. You're welcome, Mega Man fans in the future. Well, no matter what Capcom has planned, I still want to celebrate Mega Man this year. And I've always said that Mega Man is perfect for a fighting game. It's a series loaded with memorable characters, each with unique moves and abilities and designs, and there's decades of material to choose from. Heck, the cartoons even used to refer to him as... If that isn't a sales pitch, I don't know what is. And to Capcom's credit, they did try a semi-fighting game. In 1995, they put out Mega Man The Power Battle, and then the next year, they released Mega Man 2 Power Fighter for arcades, which are both now finally available for everyone to play thanks to the Capcom Arcade Stadium. And these games were classified as fighting games, and many fans do consider them to be fighting games, but I'm not one of them. Basically, you can pick one of three characters, four in the sequel, and then you fight a series of robot masters, making your way up to fighting Wily. Yeah, I get how on paper that sounds like a fighting game arcade ladder, but you can't play as any of the robot masters, you can't fight against the selectable characters, you can't play against another player. Yeah, this isn't a fighting game. It's just the traditional Mega Man in-game boss rush without the rest of the game in front of it. No, Mega Man deserves an actual fighting game with its own unique mechanics and a variety of modes and online play and a full roster. I can't really help with those first three, but I can at least do something about that last one. Yes, I might not be a game designer and I might not have a degree from Robot University, but I am a big fighting game nerd with too much time on his hands. So today, let's pretend like Capcom has a whole slew of crazy surprises planned for Mega Man's 35th anniversary, including a full-blown fighting game and it's up to us to build that roster. Now, before we begin, there's two questions we have to answer. First, how many characters? And I'm going to go with 18, because remember, this would be a Capcom fighting game, and the last Street Fighter launched with only 16 characters, and yeah, everybody kind of agreed that was too small. And if that leaked roster for Street Fighter 6 is to be believed, it looks like Capcom has learned their lesson, and they are going to go bigger. But this is still Capcom we're talking about, and this is still a spin-off game. If this got made, I would not trust them to go much higher than 16. So, yeah, I think 18 is a pretty safe bet. But here's the more important question. Which version of Mega Man are we using? This franchise has had multiple different versions over the years, so... What continuity and interpretation are we going to use? Man, if I had a nickel for every single time that I had to ask that question in a builder roster this year, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's still weird that it's happened twice. But this is a question that has to be asked, because there are so many different Mega Mans, Mega Men, and each of them have an entire universe dedicated to them with almost no overlap between them. So, which Mega Man franchise are we going with? All of them. Yes, if there's one thing that Mega Man deserves more than a fighting game, it's a crossover. You got multiple eras of Mega Man, each of which have their own loyal fan base, and yet we've never gotten a crossover. Outside of a super predatory gacha game. Sure, classic Mega Man has met X in the comics, and for one episode of the 90s cartoon where X was freaking huge, but we never got a crossover game, and darn it, it's about time that happened. Who hasn't wanted to see all these versions of Mega Man finally meet each other? How would X react to mean the classic Mega Man? How would Zero react to mean Dr. Wily? These are moments that diehard Mega Man fans would kill for. 
Heck, I still remember how much people freaked out when Mega Man's big super for Smash Bros. was revealed. It was for two seconds and it wasn't even in a Mega Man game, and yet this one shot had people losing their minds. How the heck did Capcom not take that as a sign? So yes, I'm going to attempt to fit in here characters from as many different Mega Man series as we can, and considering there's only 18 spots, that does mean we're going to have to make some tough cuts. I will gladly admit that if we just made a fighting game for every single individual series, then we would be able to create far more interesting rosters. But as I said, Mega Man deserves a crossover, so let's finally make that happen. Even if we're only making it happen within the confines of this entirely fictional video, that will in no way impact anything within reality. So let's go ahead and kick things off with... Super Fighting Robot! Mega Man! Wow, who saw this one coming? Of course the original Mega Man was going to be in this game. He's the one who started it all. But I should take this opportunity to break some bad news to you. In order to provide this game with a solid variety of characters, I am going to limit the number of Mega Men in this roster to just three. I feel like dedicating one sixth of a roster to one character is pushing things about as far as we can take it. So yes, the original Mega Man was obvious, but that means we only have two more spots available, so prepare for your favorite version of Blue Boy to possibly be absent from this list. Now as for how classic Mega Man would play in this game, he'd be the all-rounder character because, well, he's the classic, he's the original, he's the one that all the other Mega Man would be based on, sometimes quite literally. So it would make sense for his stats and abilities to be right down the middle. We could give him his basic blast attack for some range, and we could load him up on some robot master abilities specifically designed to give him good coverage all around. For example, give him that rail spike attack from Mega Man 11 for a charge attack to help him close distance, give him Cutman's blade attack for an anti-air, and as for standard projectiles, well dang, there's dozens that you can pick from. But the thing that would make him really stand out would come from his latest game, the double gear system. Either make it some kind of a super install that increases Mega Man's speed and buffs his attacks for a limited amount of time, or make it some kind of a last minute power up comeback mechanic so that way when Mega Man's life bar enters the danger zone, suddenly he gets a huge power up. Yeah, classic Mega Man would be one of the more basic fighters in here, but when you take basic stats and powers and then slap an X factor on top of it, suddenly that doesn't seem too bad. Dr. Wily. To some people, I'm sure putting Dr. Wily on this roster seems obvious. I mean, he's Mega Man's longest running villain after all. But at the same time, I'm sure a few other people out there are asking how exactly this is going to work. How is he going to fight in this game when typically he just rides around in giant robots that would be far more suited for final boss status than being a playable character? And hey, that's a fair question. But ever since Mega Man got added to Smash Bros, I've seen so many people asking for Dr. Wily to be added in there as well. Which he sort of eventually was as an assist trophy. But I think there's a lot of interesting stuff that you can do with Dr. Wily as an actual playable character. For starters, put him in that little escape pod that he likes to ride around in. You know, the one that destroys your eardrums? Since he's riding around this pod, he would kind of just glide across the screen, and that would make him really unique because he wouldn't have a jump. Instead, you could just make him temporarily hover off the ground anytime that you press up. And we could also give him a boost button, where if you press that button while you're moving, you'll then quickly dash in that direction, and that would also apply to moving up or down. And on top of all that, we could also slap a teleport ability on him, making him a character that would be admittedly very hard to control, but once you figured it out, he would be one of the hardest to hit characters in the game. Which seems to be pretty fitting considering how annoying he can be to beat at the end of these games. As for his regular specials, let's give him an electric attack, but we could also let him summon in some basic enemies to just walk across the screen and fire at you. Essentially, Wily would be a huge zoner who would try and either keep you at a distance or just get away from you. 
And as for supers, he would call in some of the larger robots from the games to attack the entire screen, like the Mecha Dragon or one of those dozen skull ships that he owns. Basically, Wily would be a big reference machine, the character that makes you point the screen and go, oh, hey, I remember that thing from that game. Roll! So as I said, Mega Man, despite not having his own fighting game, has appeared in a lot of fighting games. But he's not the only member of the Robo family to jump into the ring. Shockingly enough, out of all the other Mega Man characters Capcom could put in a fighting game, Roll is the one who keeps getting in. She appeared in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, where she was basically an Echo Fighter for Mega Man, but then later she would appear in Tatsunoku vs. Capcom, and this time she was completely her own character. In fact, regular basic Mega Man wasn't even in that game. And there's a good reason that they keep putting her in games. Despite never having been playable in any of the mainline games, she remains one of the more iconic characters from that series. Heck, she's one of the only characters from that franchise to cross over into other Mega Man franchises. Which, just speaking from a business standpoint, which is the kind of thing that Capcom always wants to keep in mind, it means that if you put her in this game, she would have a ton of alternate costumes that you could sell to the customer. So yeah, if she's that important to the series and she's that beloved by the fans, then of course we have to include her. As for her moveset, as nostalgic as I am for Marvel vs. Capcom 2, as I said, she was basically just a clone of Mega Man in there. So let's go with her Tatsunoku vs. Capcom model and have her just smack you around with a broom and a bucket of water. How great would it be for Dr. Wily to be defeated by household cleaning supplies? Proto Man. If we're talking about classic Mega Man characters, you have to include Proto Man. Every kid from my generation can remember that iconic whistle, those shades and scarf giving him this air of mystery. This guy was as cool as an 8-bit sprite could get. Now, when I think of how Proto Man would fight, he'd be a very high defense character. I mean, this guy carries a shield around, and he is capable of negating attacks in the actual Mega Man games, so he'd have some of the highest defense in the game, and he'd have plenty of attacks that would have armor on them. However, the downside would be that, like most big defense characters, he would be slower than your average fighter, and he wouldn't have that much range. Sure, we could give him the same basic blaster attack that Mega Man has, but I picture most characters in this game would have a variety of projectiles, but Proto Man would really only have the one. The rest of his attacks would all be bashing you around with his shield, and we could give him a Captain America-style shield charge to help him close the distance to the opponent. However, while Proto Man would be kinda tanky, he wouldn't be the tankiest character in the game. No, that would go to... <laughs> Guts Man. Okay, we need at least one Robot Master in here. I know that when you merge all the Mega Man games together, it does kind of limit us to mostly the big face characters, but the Robot Masters are so iconic we have to squeeze one in here. And from the classic Mega Man series, I have to pick Guts Man. First off, I would gladly argue he was one of the most iconic Robot Masters. I mean, he's one of the only bosses to return for a later game, and even got a massive upgrade when he did it. And years later, he even got promoted to being a supporting character in the Mega Man Battle Network series. But aside from being iconic, there's another huge reason why we have to include him. Because you want to make sure that you pick characters who can represent all types of fighting styles. And if Gutsman isn't the most grappler Mega Man character to ever exist, then I don't know who is. This guy's one power is his big arms that he uses to pick up and throw stuff. Gutsman has to be in here for all the citizens of the Grappler Nation. Plus, as I said, in Mega Man Battle Network, he did become a supporting character, but unlike most of the reimagined characters for Battle Network, Gutsman didn't change all that much. So, we could just give him an alternate skin for his Battle Network version, and boom, you got a free Echo Fighter right there. And that is unfortunately the last character from the classic Mega Man series. Oh, believe me, I know! 
I know there are still a ton of characters who would be great to include, and I can guarantee there is one individual that everyone is bringing up right now, and I will address that later. But yeah, we're squeezing multiple Mega Man games into 18 roster spots. These spaces are super limited. So, five characters is about the max that I could fit into a single series. Which means it's time to move into the future, to the next Mega Man game as we welcome... X. As I said, I'm limiting myself to three versions of Mega Man, and I feel like X is just as obvious of a choice as the classic Blue Bomber. The Mega Man X franchise was huge back in the day. In fact, if it wasn't for the massive drop in quality of the later games, it would probably still be a success for Capcom. Eh, maybe. I honestly can't tell what Capcom is thinking anymore. Now, as for how X would fight, I got a really really weird idea for this one. X is a pacifist. He doesn't like to fight unless it's absolutely necessary. And one of the most iconic mechanics of the X franchise was collecting pieces of armor to upgrade yourself with crazy powerful abilities. So let's give X the basic buster arm, but then let's make most of his other specials focus on defense. Stuff that doesn't aggressively go after your opponent, but instead counters your opponent when they try and attack or knocks them away from you to make some space. But I'm also going to take some inspiration from Phoenix Wright in Marvel vs. Capcom. Remember how in that game he could investigate to get a piece of evidence and once you got all the pieces of evidence you could go into some kind of a super stage? Well, let's say that X will have the ability to search for a piece of armor. There would be three different sets of armor that you could collect. The Falcon armor, which would increase your speed and maneuverability the original armor, which would increase your power, and the Gaia armor, which would increase your defense. Yes, I know the Gaia armor sucks in the regular games, but that name is too good to be tied to something so bad, so let's give it to X in this game and fix it so it's cool. Now, you could collect pieces of multiple armor sets at the same time. Then when you collect all five pieces of one armor, you could do a super move to transform into it. And because it would take so much work to get all that armor together, once you transform into it, you would just have it for the rest of the match. So whatever buff you get would not be temporary. You did all that work to get it, you deserve to use it. Now, you might be asking right now, wait, but what if you have multiple complete sets of armor all at once? Simple, just tie each armor set to a different button. You input the motion for the super, the same as normal, but then at the end, whatever button you press will decide which armor you change into. So let's say the button input in order to do the super that puts you in your suit of armor is down forward, down forward button. If you do down forward, down forward heavy punch, you change into your Gaia armor. If you do down forward, down forward heavy kick, you go into your Falcon armor. You see how that works? It's super complicated, I will admit, but I think it would be a really interesting way to put one of the most unique and enjoyable experiences within the X franchise into X's actual gameplay. Zero. This was another no-brainer. Heck, I might as well have put him in here first because he's probably even more of an obvious choice than X. Zero was so popular, he basically took the series away from X. Even when they tried to have him enter a deep sleep so they could write him out of the story, in the very next game, he just popped up again like nothing happened because I guess someone at Capcom just realized, oh my god, we just put our most popular character on ice. What were we thinking? So yeah, put Zero in here, and since he's known for his speed and mostly fights close range with his sword, make him a rushdown character who is constantly in the opponent's face. Also, remember how I said they were originally going to write Zero off by having him go into a deep sleep? Well, years later, we got the spin-off series Mega Man Zero, where Zero did indeed wake up hundreds of years in the future, and he had undergone some serious changes. Well, just like I said with Guts Man, let's make that future Zero look an alternate costume for Main Zero, and boom, you got another good, cheap, easy Echo Fighter in this roster. Make your roster smarter, people, not harder.
Come and get me, X. The time has come to prove your mettle against me. This fight will decide the fate of all Reploids. Sigma. Of course Sigma is going to be in here. He's Sigma. Literally the entire plot of Mega Man X is just somehow Sigma returned. He's one of the best villains in Capcom's entire library, and he's the biggest threat in the Mega Man universe, even bigger than Dr. Wily. Hell, he's even the perfect catalyst for the plot of this game. Just say Sigma has figured out some kind of a way to create portals to different times and worlds, and now he's going to use them to spread the Sigma virus throughout the multiverse. Heck, merge him and Wily together and have the big final boss of the game be one of Wily's big ships, but now it's been completely overtaken by Sigma. As for how he'd play? Hey, I think he played just fine in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I know he got added to that game long after everyone stopped playing it, but trust me, he was actually really good here. He was aggressive and he knew how to apply pressure, which to me is perfect for Sigma. Although, if I was going to make any changes to him, considering that he's known for coming back from the dead over and over and over again, let's give him a resurrection ability, where if you got full super meter when he dies, then he can come back with a third of his health. Something that annoying and unfair is perfect for Sigma. Heck, most of his boss fights have multiple stages anyway, this would just make sense. Nice to see you again, X. Vile. If you want to include a recurring villain from the X series, then you go with Sigma. But if you want to include a second recurring villain from the X series, then you go with Vile. He's the very first villain that you run into in the X series, and he immediately establishes himself as a massive threat as he beats down X like it was nothing. So, let's translate that into his playstyle and make him the big tank of the X characters. Give him high defense and armor to make him feel like he is untouchable. But the downside would be, as you can probably guess, he wouldn't be that quick because... Well, look at him. That suit of armor does not look like it's designed to be flipping and dashing all over the place. No, Vile is built like a Terminator. He is going to stand there and walk at you slowly, but menacingly. In fact, speaking of high defense and armor, just to really drive it home, remember how in the first game he fought you in his right armor? That's an install super if I've ever heard one. So let's let him summon out his ride armor as a super and for a limited amount of time, he would only be able to ride around it and do basic attacks and throws, but he would have unlimited armor on everything. Magma Dragoon. And it's time for our final Mega Man X character in this roster, and just like how we had to include at least one Robot Master from the original series, we have to include at least one of the Mavericks from X. And for this one, there's simply no debate, it has to be Magma Dragoon. Magma Dragoon was a high-ranking Maverick Hunter who worked alongside X and Zero, but he ends up betraying them and working alongside Sigma to destroy an entire city, and he does all this because he wants to fight X and Zero because he craves fighting strong opponents. Okay, the logic of his decision aside, if you can't put in your fighting game the character whose entire motivation is I want to fight strong opponents, then what are we even doing here? And as for how he'd fight, yeah, he's got meteor summons and he's got a big fire breath attack that would be great for supers, but as for his specials, he literally uses Hadoukens and Shoryukens. Like, they're actually even called that in the game. When I say literally, I'm using literally correctly. Capcom already has this dude's moveset sitting right there in their other fighting game. Just give Ryu a robot dragon skin and you're good. All right, we got eight more characters left and we got a boatload of other Mega Man games to go through. So we're not going to have any more games with five characters. I mean, the cuts are about to become far more severe. And next up, we're going to continue the X saga with the Mega Man Zero games, and from those games, I'm picking... Sage Harpuya. Man, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. 
The Mega Man Zero games, in my opinion, might be, on average, the best in the entire franchise. And they introduce so many recurring villains and allies who would be great to use. However, it is the spin-off of the main X games, so it's kind of hard for me to justify giving those games more than just one roster spot. So for that spot, I'm going to go with Sage, because not only were they a member of the Four Guardians, the big villain group in the first game, but over the course of the Zero Saga, Sage progressed and grew more than almost any other character in that series, as they actually had a character arc and went from villain to unlikely hero. Also, they're known for their aerial combat, so you can make this a character who is all about speed and maneuverability. We let them have crazy air combos and juggles that might not do big damage, but would sure look cool and would be hard for solar characters to keep up with them. Again, it stings that we're only putting one Mega Man Zero character in here, but if we can only pick one, I think Sage is the best choice. Plus, as I said earlier, we could just give Zero an alternate costume to be how he looks in these games. Heck, we could maybe even do the same for X and give him a copy X costume. So it would be like we have one full character and two half characters. girl who's being chased by that dog? Shut up! Next, we're moving into the Mega Man Legend series, and... Well, listen. I know the Legend games have their fans. Fans who have been done incredibly dirty by Capcom over the years. And I like the Legend games. I think they're insanely charming. But their lineup of characters is immensely smaller than any of the other Mega Man games. And it had the fewest installments of any Mega Man game. So you put those two together, and it means I can only justify including one character from there, and if we're putting in one character, it has to be Tron Bond. I'd argue she is easily the most popular character in that series, having gone on to get her own spin-off and even being playable in two Marvel vs. Capcom games. So yeah, this is an easy one. People love her, and she's already been in a fighting game, so we even know what her moveset would be. Done. Moving on. Mega Man EXE. And now we move on to the Mega Man Battle Network game, which, thanks in part to the successful cartoon series and being attached to the Game Boy Advance, which was a very high selling console, actually went on to be the second highest selling Mega Man franchise. Also, the fact that they sold multiple versions of the same game using the Pokemon strategy probably didn't hurt. And it's because of those high sales and the show providing a massive dose of nostalgia for many fans that I'm going to give the third and final Mega Man spot to Mega Man EXE. And just like with X, I'm going to give him a crazy, overly complicated gimmick. Hey, I gave you one basic standard Mega Man. I gotta make the other two super weird in order to spice things up. You see, Mega Man EXE has arguably the widest range of abilities and moves out of any of the Megas. So we would give him some of the most powerful specials in the entire game with a wide variety that would be good for responding to many different situations. So what's the downside? Well, the reason why EXE has so many abilities is because they're all linked to these cards that he can be equipped with. So what I'm picturing is that at the bottom of the screen, right above his super meter, we would have a card counter. And each time you use a special move, the card counter would tick down. And once you've used up all the cards, that's it, you're out of specials. This would make EXE a character who would be incredibly tough at the beginning. But if you can survive against him long enough until he uses up those card counters, then he's pretty helpless afterwards. Which makes him a pretty big brain character. You go in there, you play him super aggressive and ungabunga, just throwing everything at the wall. Sure, you could overrun your opponent at the start, but if they manage to survive your assault, then you're screwed. No, you'd have to think about everything that you're doing and make all your shots count. Plus, this makes EXE a pretty easy character to balance. Each time that patch comes out, you just adjust how many cards he has until it feels fair. Okay, since we're in the Battle Network games, we need to go ahead and address this. 
Almost every Battle Network character is a reimagining of a character from the main Mega Man games. Meaning, it would be really easy to double up on some of these characters. Heck, I even said when talking about Gutsman that we could just give him an alternate Battle Network skin to get a cheap, easy Echo Fighter in here. Problem is that Gutsman is really one of the only Robot Masters and Net Navvies who share similar abilities. Everyone else is completely different, so you can't just put them in here as an alternate skin, so we would have to make them brand new characters. So in the interest of keeping this roster unique, just like how I'm limiting the number of Mega Mans I'm including, I'm only going to pick one other character to double up on. And if we're talking about one character who had a major role in the original Mega Man games and a major role in the Battle Network games, it has to be... Roll. I seriously didn't realize that I wrote a pun into this script until reading it right now, but you know what? I'm going to keep it in. Yeah, Roll was a major supporting character in the Battle Network games, and unlike her original game counterpart, she was equipped with a variety of weapons. She could use whips, arrows, her antennas, at least I think that's what those are supposed to be, and has attacks that can heal your life back, which would make for a good super. Base EXE. Okay, for those of you out there who have been shouting for the last 20 minutes, why wasn't Base included? Believe me, I get you. Base was one of my favorite characters in the original Mega Man games. I was a kid in the 90s. If you had an evil rival version of your main character, they were instantly cool to me. However, as I said, I only wanted to include one duplicate character for the Battle Network games, and yet kind of had to be Roll. I mean, I had to choose between regular Base and base EXE. And as nostalgic as I am for classic base, who am I kidding? Base EXE is the clear winner. And it's not just because that tarred cloak is an amazing design choice, but also because while the original base was Mega Man's rival, base EXE is in game boss status. He's one of the most powerful characters in these games, and has been a boss character in almost each of the Battle Network games. Granted, he was a secret boss in most of them, but that still counts. Heck, we could basically make him like this game's version of Akuma. As I said, Sigma and Wily would be the regular main bosses of the game, but let's say you get through the arcade ladder with a high enough score within a fast enough time, then you could unlock a secret boss fight against Base EXE. Serenade. All right, if you've watched this show for long enough, then you know that I have a few rules that I like to follow when I build these rosters. And one is that there always has to be the weird pick. That doesn't mean the character themselves is considered weird, just that they're not one of the mainline characters that you would expect in the game. You need that far out there pick that would get people talking. And for this Mega Man game, my out there pick is going to be Serenade. They only appeared in the third game as a secret boss, but they're still kind of a big deal. They're the ruler of the Undernet, which in Battle Network is a land underneath the rest of the net low with criminals and forbidden tech, making it like one part black market and one part hell. And I mentioned that base is insanely powerful in the Battle Network games, but Serenade has beaten them easily. So if you have a character whose entire thing is, I'm the ruler of robot hell and I beat the strongest guy in the series with ease, yeah, I want to throw them in here. Plus, I really dig their design. With them being that powerful, I could just see them standing there in the fight, just super casual, like they're not even trying, as those big wing claw spike things on their back just slash at you. And when it comes to their powers, they have a ricocheting blast attack, and they've got the ability to reflect the opponent's attacks back at them, making this a character who would constantly keep the opponent on their toes. And that was our final Bell Network character, meaning we only have two more roster spots, and they'll both be coming from the Mega Man Star Force games, or as I like to call them, Mega Man, holy crap, how are these games this expensive? Let's hope that upcoming Bell Network collection sells well, so that way in five years Capcom will give us a Star Force collection. Yeah, I'll go ahead and admit to you guys, this is the one major Mega Man series I don't know much about. 
when these games were coming out, I had sort of fallen out of the Mega Man games, and thanks to the fact that DS games are becoming insanely rare, I haven't yet gotten a chance to go back and play them. But after spending a healthy chunk of time researching the series, I think I've picked out two characters that everyone will be happy with. Cue everyone not being happy in three, two, one. Blast him one more time. Plasma gun! <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> there are two Gemini sparks! Two parts equal one, which means until now, I've only used half of my true power. Gemini Spark. Gemini was one of the villains in the very first Star Force game, and he's got a really unique concept behind him. Which is saying something considering that the premise of Star Force is radio wave aliens are merging with human beings. But Gemini Spark is actually one person with split personalities that caused him to split into two people. Which is the big reason why I wanted to include him. I think that would give him a super unique moveset. Imagine him playing kind of like Chizuru from King of Fighters, where he can just send out his double to attack across the screen, or kind of like how Goku Black in Dragon Ball Fighters can have his other self pop up behind the opponent and grab them while the main character attacks you. When making these rosters, I'm always looking for characters who would fight in very unique ways, and I think Gemini Spark is perfect for that. Also, we fight with electricity, which is one of the most common attack types of Mega Man villains, but somehow we haven't had a single electric villain in this entire roster yet, so we need to correct that. And for the final character... Harp Note. Or Lyra Note, if you're going by the anime name. You know what, screw it, I'm just going to call her by her human name, Sonia Strum. Because I am a sucker for alliteration. If you have a first and last name that starts with the same letter, I'm already on your side. Sonia fights with musical bass attacks, which is not only unique, but it's also low with personality. Maybe she could have a projectile that comes out of speakers, or she could just jam out on her guitar to make a radial blast that gets opponents on both sides of her, which would be a great anti-air for opponents trying to cross you up. But the main reason I'm putting her in here is because, as I said, I don't know that much about Star Force. It is indeed a big gap in my Mega Man education. But I do know one thing. People really like Sonya Strum. Whenever I see people talk about their favorite Star Force characters, she always comes up. In fact, that extends beyond just Star Force and Mega Man. Whenever I see people making their own fan-made Capcom crossover games, because yes, I too am a fan of seeing other people's hypothetical fighting game rosters, she comes up a fair number of times. So even if I'm not that familiar with her, I know enough to know she's the fan favorite spot on this roster. And there you have it, your full Mega Man fighting game roster. Base EXE, Dr. Wily, Gemini Spark, Gutsman, Magma Dragoon, Mega Man, Mega Man EXE, Proto Man, Roll, Roll EXE, Sade Harpuya, Serenade, Sigma, Sonya Strom, Tron Bon, Val, X, and Zero. A decent starting roster, but you know... I can't help but feel like it's just too limited, too basic. We're only really getting the big name characters in here. But with only 18 spots, you can't really dive that deep into so many different Mega Man franchises. And as I said, if Capcom did make this game, I don't think we'd get a starting roster much larger than this. So what's the solution? Maybe dive a little bit into that DLC territory and just see what characters could pop up in there? Nope. Yeah, that's probably a shock to some of you who are longtime fans of this show, because normally after doing the main roster, we then do DLC. But we're not going to do DLC today. Because instead, I have an idea for something that is far more complicated and time consuming, but screw it, complicated and time consuming is the name of this channel. You remember way back at the start of this video, I said that because we were cramming so many different Mega Man series into just 18 roster spots, we'd probably be able to make far more interesting rosters if we just gave each Mega Man series their own fighting game? Well, this wasn't my intent when I originally wrote that, but because I am a crazy person who can't control himself, I couldn't get that idea out of my head. And as I was writing this video, I started tinkering with that idea. And the next thing I knew, somehow I had ended up making a roster for Mega Man, Mega Man X, and Mega Man Battle Network. 
So yes, I know this is insanely stupid, but screw it. Mega Man is turning 35, that's a big deal. Someone should do something big for the occasion. Capcom. And I'm not going to wait until the 40th, 45th, and 50th anniversary to do each of these other episodes. So prepare for three bonus rosters today, coming at you rapid fire. First up, a fine game based around classic Mega Man. I am sticking with 18 characters for this roster and we already got five, meaning we have 13 more to go. First up, Baze. This was the number one character I wanted to include, but I had to get cut. He's Mega Man's biggest rival. He's the darker, edgier version of him. So let's make him play like a far more aggressive Mega Man. The Unga Bunga, I will get in your face and keep attacking version of Mega Man. But he wouldn't have the double gear system, which would even him out. Next up, Quick Man. I include Guts Man to be a grappler in the game. Well, on the opposite end of that spectrum, you need a rushdown character. And if Quick Man isn't the rushdown character of this game, I don't know who is. Next, moving to a little bit of a wilder pick, Pharaoh Man. I'll admit I'm partly including him just because I think he's got one of the coolest designs of any of the Robot Masters, but he also can control sand, and putting a character into your fighting game who can control the ground itself opens up a lot of possibilities. Now, we need another hero, so let's go with Duo, the robot from space with a giant fist. He's big and tanky, super strong, he's gonna hit hard, he's got high defense, but his normal attacks would be slow, so that way he wouldn't be able to respond while the player's getting up in his face. But he's got that charge attack that would be a great way to get in close to an opponent and power through their attacks. Next up, another out there pick, but definitely a fan favorite, Skull Man. What can I say, this guy's just got a super memorable design. Let him send out Skull Blast or toss out bones for a variety of range attacks, and for a super, he can get that spinning skull shield around him to block all attacks for a limited amount of time. Sticking with darker characters, Shadow Man. Again, cool design, fan favorite, he's a ninja, there's a thousand different ninja characters out there in fine games that you can take inspiration from, this one is easy. Next up, Gravity Man. Feels like we should include at least one of the more cosmic themed robot masters, and Gravity Man would have the most unique ability to me. He could use his ability to alter gravity in order to set up traps on the field to stop you from moving, or he can have push attacks or slam attacks that lead into wall bounces or ground bounces that can set up for further combos. 12 down, six more to go. Metal Man, again, guy admit I'm partly using this one just because I love his design. There's a handful of robot masters who just scream classic Mega Man to me, and this is one of them. And with his buzz saws, he could either throw them out in the air for a high attack or have them ride across the ground for a low attack, which would be a great way to keep your opponent on their toes. Heck, you could even have the heavy version of his ground buzz saw just sit there and rotate on the ground for a second before firing off to screw with your opponent's timing. Next up, Sword Man. It's a fine game, he has a weapon attached to his arm, this is a no-brainer. Also, he's a fire-type robot master, another elemental type that is so iconic that we need to include at least one of them in here. And that ability that he has to disconnect his upper body from his lower body could really mix up your opponent hard. Next, Nightman. He's slow, but he's got armor on his attacks. I mean, he is literally based on guys in suits of armor. And that flail of his is a super unique weapon, which would have a slow startup, but would also give him some good range, which is something that most tanky characters lack. Only three characters left, and we still haven't gotten to our weird character. And you can't get much weirder than Sheepman. Yeah, remember how perplexing this dude was when he was added to Mega Man 10? I don't even think people remember any of the other robot masters from Mega Man 10 because all knowledge of them was erased so that way we could have more space in our heads to contemplate Sheep Man. So put him in here and considering he can make clouds that fire down electricity, he'd be another great trap character as he could set his clouds up to keep your opponent away or to catch them by surprise when they're not looking. Then you got Splash Woman from Mega Man 9 who again, just like Sheep Man, was kind of all anyone could talk about when that game came out because holy cow, a female robot master. It took us nine games, but it finally happened. Plus, she's a water type robot master and that's one of the most recurring themes for these villains, so we should include at least one in here. And the final character for this roster, Blast Man. We should include at least one character from the most recent game, Mega Man 11, in order to keep this roster up to date. And because as I said earlier, Mega Man 11 is the second highest selling Mega Man game, I repeat, Capcom, it's the second highest selling game out of over 40 releases. Maybe that means something. 
And out of all these new Robot Masters, I think Blastman fits the most. His big explosive powers are right for specials and supers, and since he works on movie sets, he's got this big showman personality that would help him stand out from other Robot Masters. And there, a full-blown 18 character rosters for a classic Mega Man fighting game. I will admit, I was tempted to throw the Yellow Devil in here just to be a jerk, but nah, that guy's an unlockable boss. This roster gets us a good variety of playstyles, good mix of heroes and villains, and most importantly, includes one robot master from every single mainline Mega Man game. Except for Mega Man 7. Yeah, sorry, I just... None of them really felt right to me. But hey, I did include Baze, and he first appeared in Mega Man 7, so I'm going to count it. But that was the easy one of the three. Now things are going to get more interesting with... Again, we already have five characters, so we only have 13 left. I know you might be thinking, wait, weren't there six characters? What about Sage Harpuria? Yeah, Mega Man Zero was a continuation of the Mega Man X games, but I'm still going to count them as separate games for this. We're only going to stick with the main Mega Man X continuity. So to start things off, Axel. This one just makes sense. X and Zero were always the main two characters of the X games, but then in X7, they decided to try and introduce a third hero. And yes, X7 is one of the two worst games in the entire franchise, but he did stick around for X8 and for that RPG spinoff that they made, so he's now been in these games enough to feel like a major part of the series. So we should go ahead and include him. He can fire off his blasters for some good range, but Axel's main power was the ability to steal other robots' forms and use their powers, so let's give him the ability to steal one move from the opponent and use it himself, kind of like Seth from Street Fighter V or Rogue from X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Next, let's throw the Colonel in there. He's one of the major faces behind X4, which a lot of people consider to be the best in the series, and led to one of Zero's most memeable moments. He can keep up with Zero in a sword fight, so he would have some pretty quick normals, and he's large in size, so he would have some good range, but he doesn't have Zero's variety of attacks, so in order to balance him out, his specials would be far more basic. Next up, Dynamo, one of the few big name villains in the series to actually make an impact on the story. He already shows off a wide range of moves with his swords and energy attacks in the game itself, so yeah, not much to outline here. He's pretty self-explanatory. Next, speaking of big name villains, let's throw Violin in there. I had to include at least one of the X Hunters in here, and out of all three of them, Sergei's just doesn't really feel all that threatening to me, and Agile would be a good fit, but we kind of already have a lot of sword fighters in this game. Between Zero, the Colonel, Sigma, and Dynamo, we're already approaching Smash Bros. level of Swordsmen, so that just leaves us with Violin, the big gorilla man with a mace for hair. Next, one more big name villain, Hymax. This guy was a huge threat in X6, which granted is the other game that is often considered the worst in the entire franchise, but hey, he's insanely strong and I dig his design, so he gets in. Give him super high defense and very powerful specials to make him feel overpowered, but his normals would all kind of suck in order to balance him out. He's not really a character who would be able to pull out big crazy combos, more of someone who puts all their damage into single attacks. Now to throw you all a real curveball, Alia. Yes, X's robot in the chair, that character that's always calling him up to provide him with information. She's a big recurring character in the series, so she does deserve to be considered, and to be perfectly honest with you guys, when making these rosters, I like to try and include a healthy chunk of both male and female characters, but that's not really possible in the Mega Man games because like 95% of the cast are men or at least robots who have man in their name. So yeah, when it comes to picking a female character for this roster, my choices are kind of limited. But Aaliyah is one of the recurring faces in these games, and in X8, you could actually unlock her to be a playable character, where she basically was just a copy of X. But hey, that's fine. I'm all for Echo Fighters, that's a great way to include more characters. So we'd give Aaliyah some unique specials and supers that don't follow X's armor theme, but her basic attacks could borrow heavily from him. Alright, that's all for the major faces, time to go to the actual Mavericks, the animal theme robots that you have to beat in each game. We got seven to go through, so let's pick up the pace. Going to get the weird pick out of the way right now, Chill Penguin. Yes, I know there are cooler ice themed Mavericks, no pun intended, but I think Chill Penguin is far more iconic to the series. Plus, he would have a very, say it with me crowd, unique moveset. He'd be slow, but he could have a low hitting belly slide that would get him across the screen fast, and he could of course create ice clones of himself to block attacks, freeze the opponent, or just be sent across the screen as a projectile. 
Next, another Maverick from the very first game. Let's throw in Storm Eagle for the Aerial Fighter, that character who is very light and basically specializes in doing all kinds of crazy combos in the air. Now, moving from the first game in the series to the last, it's Dark Mantis. He's your typical deadly assassin type character. He's got those clawed arms, let's put them to use with some quick slash attacks with good range. Next, I want a more savage fighter, someone who just swings a whole string of claw slashes at you, either because they're a wrecker fighter or because their moves are just so aggressive that it's rewarding to just keep leaning into them. So my thoughts came down to two candidates, Neon Tiger or Slash Beast. And while I do think Slash Beast is immensely cooler than Neon Tiger, his design, the fact that he starts the match off by just running after you on the train, he's such a badass character. But I already got Magma Dragoon in here from Mega Man X4, but I don't have anyone from X3 just yet. So in order to provide a bigger spread to all the games, let's go with Neon Tiger. Next up, I'm going to cross two fires off the list at once. From Mega Man X5, Crescent Grizzly, and Spike Rosard. Or as I will be calling them, Grizzly Slash and Axel the Red. Yeah, I know it's hypocritical of me right after I just got done saying I'm going to pick characters from different games in order to create some variety to immediately include two characters from the exact same game, but I do think X5, despite all of its other problems, did have a great selection of Mavericks, and that could possibly be due to the fact that the English localization team decided to just change all their names to be references to Guns N' Roses. That's true, look it up. It's kinda weird. Grizzly Slash is the big grappler of the game. Sure, there's a lot of other big Mavericks out there, but he is a literal bear. You know, the creatures with hugs so strong we named a wrestling move after them. Plus, you know how halfway through the fight he starts digging through the ground to come up anywhere and grab you? That would be an amazing special. Oh, can your big bulky grappler not get close enough to the enemy to grab them? Just do his special move, he digs down to the ground, pops up behind them, and now he's ready to grab and slash them. And Axel the Red is just super original. In a world full of animal-themed mavericks, Axel the Red is one of the only plant-based mavericks. And I just love his design. I have distinct memories when x 5 was released and everyone at my school was talking about this guy. He instantly stood out. And as for how he'd fight, thanks to that spike whip of his, he would have some really long-hitting normals and some great range in this game. And as for the final X character, I'm about to get really obscure on y'all. Burkana. Yeah, that's right, I'm pulling out a character from the Mega Man X Game Boy games. I'm doing this for two reasons. One is because, as I said, you need more female characters in your fighting game. I mean, out of 17 characters I've listed so far, only one of them is a woman. That's a bad equation no matter how you look at. But also, I'll be real with you guys, I just love Burkana's design. A magical themed robot? That's science and sorcery merged into one. That is an amazing combination. Plus, after doing shows on fighting games for so many years, between Eno and Guilty Gear and Nine the Phantom and Blaze Blue, I've come to realize I just really like big witch hats on characters. I don't know why, I just think they're neat. Okay, there you go. Full Mega Man X fighting game roster done. I know some people might be upset that I didn't include any of the Mega Man Zero characters in there, but considering that that game was a continuation of the X saga, I personally think the best thing to do with those characters would just be to make a whole season of DLC for this game based entirely around the Zero games, including Zero, Sage Harpuya, Fairy Leviathan, Ash, Prometheus, and Crab. So okay, there, two down, one roster left. Why did I think this was a good idea? All right, 35th anniversary, big deal. Someone should be doing something special about that. Right, Capcom? Eh, Capcom's not watching. Okay, final roster, the Mega Man Battle Network fighting game. 18 characters, only four have been picked so far, so we got 14 more to go. First up, let's just go ahead and make Gutsman EXE official rather than an alternate skin. He was a big part of the cartoon, so even casual fans know him, and he is perfect to be a grappler. Then, you gotta have Proto Man EXE in there. Although, unlike Gutsman, who would play pretty much exactly like his original self, Proto Man would be completely different from his classical version. He's got a giant sword instead of a shield, so he would be far more attack focused rather than defense focused. Next, Shark Man. He's a shark. Man. And I just think that's cool. Plus, he has the ability to swim through the floor, which is a perfect ability for getting past projectiles and getting in close to your opponent. Speaking of characters I'm including just because I think they're cool looking, Shade Man. Listen, every single one of these games has had some kind of a vampire villain, and they're all good, but I can only pick one. 
and Shade Man EXE is easily the best. He's got the classic vampire look, but it is oozing with personality. So put him in here and load him up with classic vampire fight moves, like flight and specials that can drain your opponent's life while restoring your own. Next, we need some characters who just feel like they were designed specifically to fight. So I am going with Slash Man. While the original Slash Man was designed to be more bestial, this guy's designed to be more like a martial artist. And with those big clawed sleeves, he kind of reminds me of Waldstein from Under Night and Birth. So I'd honestly be okay with just copying and pasting a couple of Waldstein's big long arm swings and grabs from that game and putting them in here. I think it would fit great. Now, as I said, the original Slash Man was far more savage and beast-like, and the creators of Battle Network took a lot of that inspiration and put into the brand new character, Beast Man. So our next fighter is Beast Man. Yeah, he's our Wolverine. Give him claw slashes, record attacks, very ungabunga stuff. Next, Search Man. Do you like Happy Chaos in Guilty Gear? Okay, he's not going to be that broken, but a character who puts a target radical over the opponent and then can fire at them from across the screen? Yeah, we already got a gameplay example of that, and Search Man fits it perfectly. Next, I already said Serenade would be in this game. Well, Serenade's right-hand agent is Yamato Man, or Japan Man as he is known in English. So it would just make sense to include him. Plus, you need a more classic fighting style character to counterbalance everyone firing out big giant laser beams and elemental attacks. So Yamato Man's spear would be great for mid-range attacks and combos that can range from short and simple to crazy and complex, making him a good character for any skill level. Speaking of characters connected to Serenade, let's also go with Dark Man. He was a ruthless assassin until he was defeated by Serenade. Now he's a dark guardian of the Undernet, which means that just like Yamato Man, he would be perfect to pop up in the story mode since we already got Serenade in there. Plus, did you hear that description? A dark assassin slash guardian? Heck yeah, this dude would be perfect for a fighting game. Give him a high attack and specials that can crumple your opponent to leave them wide open for further combos. Let's return to some more reimaginings of classic robot masters. Shadow Man. I already talked about his classic version when we were talking about the original Mega Man fighters, but I think Shadow Man EXE is cool enough for us to include him in here as well, and he would play pretty much exactly the same as we talked about earlier, so there isn't much to change here. Elect Man. I love classic Elect Man. He was one of my favorite designs from the original Robot Masters. However, I just couldn't find the space to fit him into the classic Mega Man roster. Luckily, I think his battle network design is pretty cool too, so we'll include him in here. Coming up on the end here, folks, and one of the most recurring characters in the Battle Network games was a famous net battler called Mr. Famous. Not very original, but he gets the point across. Well, over the games, he has had four different net navvies, so we should probably include at least one of them in here. And as tempted as I am to include Gridman, because who wouldn't want a football player in their fine game, I'm instead going to go with Punk. Why? because we have way too many characters in this roster so far with man in their name. It's starting to get really repetitive. We need something to break all that up. Plus, with that long whip arm of his and a bike covered in spikes, he would be the ultimate unga bunga rushdown character who just focuses entirely on offense. I mean, his special power is that he can turn himself into a spike ball and roll across the screen at the opponent. That is a character who, when he attacks, he quite literally puts his whole body into it. For our penultimate character, I am bringing in Cosmo Man. As I said with Gravity Man, I like the idea of including at least one cosmic themed character. So it was down to Cosmo Man or Star Man, but A, Cosmo Man is another character completely unique to the Battle Network game, so it does help this game stand out as its own thing more. And B, Cosmo Man just looks like such a bigger threat, like someone who actually commands space itself. You give me someone who looks like they can summon down meteors, I want to play as that character. And that brings us to the final, 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 final character of today's video. And we need someone who couldn't just be playable in the game, but could also act as the game's final boss. The Battle Network's end bosses tend to be giant viruses that are a bit too large to be playable, but I think I got a compromise. Have a virus who can take on a smaller humanoid form to be playable, but when you beat them in the arcade ladder, they then transform into their true final form, which would be a big giant monster. And in all honesty, if this game actually existed, they would probably just create a brand new character for that. But I ain't here to come up with original characters, I'm here to figure out how to shove pre-existing characters into a fighting game. So I say make the final boss Nebula Grey. First off, they already got one of the more humanoid shapes out of any of the big viruses. I can easily see this character shrinking down and growing some legs and looking like a playable character. 
Plus, they're the embodiment of darkness within human souls, and they have the power to amplify negative emotions. If that isn't a guy who could force a bunch of characters to fight each other for the sake of the plot of a fine game, I don't know who is. Also, just like with Zero in the X Saga, Star Force was a continuation of the Battle Network games, so you could do a whole season of DLC for this game based entirely around that series. Again, I don't really know Star Force that much, so uh, I'm going to leave those six up to you at home. Let me know who you would want in that DLC in the comments down below. And that is finally the end. We have built an entire roster for a Mega Man crossover fine game, a Mega Man Classic fine game, a Mega Man X fine game, and a Mega Man Battle Network fighting game. And in case you're wondering how many times I said Mega Man over the course of this video, it was 145. I'm sure my old English professors are spinning in their grave right now. But what did you think? How were these rosters? Any big names I left out? Who would you have included? Why wasn't the bowling robot in here? Yes, that is real. Let me know all that and more in the comments down below. And if you like this video and you want to see more hypothetical rosters for fake fighting games or videos dedicated to real fighting games, then hit that subscription button. We're trying to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you like what you see here, then help us out by hitting those buttons down below and by following me on Twitter at Thorgies Arcade. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Stay safe out there. And happy birthday, Mega Man. Here's to 35 more.